Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have everybody out here today. Another beautiful Sunday morning. We praise the Lord for it. Um, he has always been faithful to us and uh, has truly blessed us during this special time. All right, let's uh, go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. Lord, we're so thankful that you are God and that you're in total control. We're thankful that you want us to worship you and to know who you are and what you're capable of. We thank you how over these last many months you have shown us over and over again your hand, your strength, your power, your ability. And I pray, Lord, that as we find encouragement today in the word, that you would lift our spirits and our heart. Thank you for all that you do. And we love you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, I'd like you to turn to uh, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, number 89, All the Way to Say My Savior Leads. <laughs> my guide. Heavenly peace, divine his comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, Here's each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see, gushing from before me, though a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit, cold immortal, wings its flight to realms of day, this my song throughout the ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. And I'd like you to uh, sing number 109, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness. Lord unto me, 
pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness that you can praise the Lord for how faithful he's been to you during these last many crazy weeks and uh, what a blessing our God is truly showing us that he is totally in control and the one on the throne okay. all right I want to sing for you uh, another hymn a good old hymn um, written a long time ago um, the mercies of God God we serve. Today we're in Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I'd like you to turn there with me. We're going to look at the scripture, continuing on with our theme, getting to know God, finding out who God is, what he wants us to know. Um, I have a little secret for you today. We have a lot of verses and a little bit of time, so we're going to have to uh, really, really move along. The good thing is all the verses that we're going to read are in one chapter. Um, because this particular verse actually quotes uh, a scripture verse in the Old Testament, and so we're going to turn there and read through that chapter to see what God's really trying to tell us. 
So uh, don't forget, God wants to talk to us. God wants to ferry us. God wants to um, bring us into the family and change our status. He wants to uh, help us to, to get the things right. He wants us to understand that he wants to be a proud papa, you know, all the things that we've been looking at. In verse number seven, the Bible says, And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire? Now, obviously, in the discussion about Jesus and who Jesus is, this is to help us to understand, again, that Jesus is higher than the angels and that Jesus is the one who created the angels and that he made them the way that they are, doing the abilities that they have, having the, uh, the, the centerpiece of what they are and everything is from God, all right? But I want you to see this in the verse that it actually quotes, okay? So as we look at this, uh, and, and of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire, you can say, how does this apply to me? All right? So turn with me, if you would, to Psalm 104. This is the verse that it's actually quoting, Psalm 104, verse 4. But we're going to start with verse 1. And the theme of today is God wants you to know who he really is. Or he wants you to know what he's really capable of, is maybe a better way of putting it. And so we have this quoted verse so that we can understand who God really is, who we're really serving, and what he has the ability to do with his voice, with his fingers, with his touch, with his everything, okay? So in Psalm 104, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. So it's putting God in the rightful place of understanding who he is and, and that he's above us. He is honor and majesty. Verse 2, Who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Again, showing the power of God. He is light. The Bible tells us when we get to the eternal home, we are going to be in a position, a place where there is no sun, no moon, no stars, at least not in the sense that we have them today, because all light will be from Jesus Christ. He is the light. And so right away, they're talking about his ability to cover himself in light. All right? And, and then it goes on and talks about that he stretched out the heavens. This is all showing what God has the power to do. You know, we're, we're little tiny things down here, and it's awesome that God cares about us, and he loves us, and he has a plan, and he has a way, and he wants us to pay attention to it, and we need to be able to see this is the God who stretched out the heavens, who just said, here, and made it in one day, 24-hour period, not months and months of planning and years and years of collecting, he made it with his word. Okay, goes on and says in verse 3, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now just think about this. In essence, he owns the water. He, he rides the clouds. And, and he, he's the only one who can capture and, and, and take the wind wherever it wants. Wherever he wants. This is our God. Okay, now here's our verse. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. I've thought about this in the sense of, a, you know, what, what is the most difficult thing to do? It's to make a spirit. Have you ever thought about that? In my eyes, anyways. Maybe this is Andrew just speaking. But I just think about to, to make an angel that has the, the total capability of, of walking among us and being here, um, it, you know, with us. Uh, the other day, um, actually last Sunday night, after the church service, um, you know, we're, we're inside and I'm sitting at the kitchen table and I'm working and studying and doing things. And it's probably about seven o'clock at night. It's just after dark. So whatever time that would be, I hear a bunch of banging outside. So I'm like, what is that? Um, and, it, you know, we, I look outside and I don't see anybody. So I'm like, oh, maybe I just heard things. Then uh, a minute later, I hear it again. Okay. And this time I go to open the door so I can look every direction and not just out a window. And uh, there standing at the garbage can was uh, from the back a man in the dark that looked like my father searching through the trash can. <laughs> in fact, Amy said, what's your dad doing looking through the trash can? Um, you know, she thought maybe when he pulled it up after the services, uh, you know, so that I didn't do it, um, it, that maybe he dropped his phone in there. Of course, I see this person taking the garbage bags, pulling them out and ripping them to shreds and rifling through and then grabbing another bag and ripping them to shreds. It turns out um, he was a drunk fella. Um, and, uh, you know, I went on the porch. Amy's like, do we need to call the cops? I said, just, just wait. Um, so we went out on the porch and uh, I 
ask him, hey, hey, hey boss, what are you doing? And, and he said uh, a whole bunch of nonsense about a beaker, and I have to have a beaker to walk on the road, and some kind of beaker that's got to be in front of me, and they won't let me walk on the road without a beaker, and he just kept going and going. And I said, well, what are you doing in the trash? I'm hungry, man. I'm hungry. He was definitely drunk, okay? Um, so, you know, Amy runs inside, gets me some, some food. We give it to him. And, uh, and, you know, I try to give him the gospel, but he's running away from me so fast that, you know, as soon as he gets his food, he's trying to get away. That pretty much all I could get to him is Jesus loves you and, and that kind of thing, okay? So he goes down on the, the, the street and he's gone, all right? So about half an hour later, we have uh, lights all over the place. And Amy's like, that guy didn't walk out in the road and just get hit by a car and die, did he? You know what I mean? That, that's the first thing that crossed her mind. Um, well, it ends up that he, he walked right up here to the corner and he laid down underneath the guardrail. And, and our neighbor back here um, saw somebody laying under the guardrail and called the police and the ambulances and they all came. And uh, I'm telling you this long story because it, it was, to me, an understanding that who knows? Am I taking care of an angel right here? That God said, I was hungry, and you fed me. I, I needed something, and you took care of it. Um, you know, I was thirsty, and, and all those things. Who, who knows? Because the Bible says we will take care of angels unaware. When I look at verse 4, I think to myself, how difficult it must have been for the awesome God, who has no difficulty at all, in my eyes, you know what I mean? To make a spirit who can take on flesh and become something that we are and yet not be us at all. That's pretty amazing. But he's a ministering spirit that can talk to us and teach us and guide us and give us the strength and all these things. Throughout the Bible, they're used to, to uh, strengthen those who, who are weak, um, to, to give them food or sustenance or various things, including Jesus um, there in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went on the cross. We're talking about... Uh, angels that were able to do that. By the way, I was extremely encouraged with my meeting with that man. It allowed me to also talk to many of the neighbors who wanted to know who he was and what was going on and all those things. And, and uh, I, I was able to talk to all of them because of it. Um, and it's a, a great blessing. It is. Okay? But who makes the angels as spirits? That's God. Who's the one that, that makes these beings who are able to pop in and out to affect things on the behalf of God in our lives? He's just amazing. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Who, who made this thing the way it is? You know, the world says if we don't take care of things, it's all going to go down the basket. We're going to ruin everything and everything will die and it'll be like the start over with the dinosaurs, which is all that evolution junk that we don't believe. But they, they have this mentality of global warming and all this. Now, by the way, as Christians, we should take care of, take dominion of, be in control of the, the place the, that God has given us, this world. We should take care of it. We should care about what's happening. So this shouldn't be a free pass to say do whatever we want. But at the same time, folks, we're talking about that God's the one who laid it, and it will be here forever. He, he will take care of this, okay? Thou coverest it with deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. Um, it, this is talking about Noah's flood. The ability for him to just totally say, okay, all right, you sin and you won't listen to me. I'll just cover the whole thing. That's real power, folks. That's real power. Be, because God has the ability to do the impossible. When, when we're saying to ourselves, you know, what, what is this verse here for in verse number 7 of Hebrews 1? I'm telling you that God wants me to know what he's truly capable of so that I can trust him. It goes on and says at verse 7, At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. So again, makes it go back again. In the beginning he did that. He had the waters everywhere and he made them go away. And now again after Noah's flood, he makes them go away. Okay. Um, they go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys under the place which thou hast founded for them. He puts them in the place. It's him that designed where the water is, where the rivers flow, where the oceans are. It's him that's designed every bit of it. It isn't just happenstance. He has put it where it is. 
You know, when you look at the Grand Canyon, I've never been there. It's one of the places I'd love to see someday. But when you stand on that Grand Canyon, I've seen pictures. You know, I can only imagine the majesty of looking at what God created there, what he made. You know, after the flood, when he ran the waters and did everything he did through that soft rock at, at the very beginning of that, that, that reset. Folks, this is our God. This is our God. I, I know the last time that I was able to take the kids to SeaWorld, about seven, eight, ten years ago, and see the, the big killer whales do amazing things. It brought tears to my eyes. This is our God. This is what he's capable of. I just, I, I can't get over who we're really serving. It, it's just amazing. Verse 9, Thou hast set, set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Again, with the flood, God made a promise. He put up a rainbow. He said, this will never happen again. This is never permitted again. God will never flood the entire earth. In other words, he has the total control. There are local floods, but there will never be again an, an entire cover the world flood. Why? Because the boss has spoken. <laughs> That's why. Verse 10, he sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. If you know my father, every property he's ever lived on, one of the things he loves to do is look at where water is bubbling in the ground and to say, there must be a spring there. You know, in the, in the place we had in West Virginia, at the very bottom, right on the left-hand side, right at the bottom of the hill, I think there's a spring there. Someday I might put a pond right there. I think there's a spring you know, God's the one who makes this water just come from the most amazing places. Why? Because he's the one in control. Verse 11, they give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. This water everywhere that God sends, it's exactly what everybody needs to make it work, isn't it? Verse 12, by them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. And again, um, the birds, they, they don't tend to stay in the desert. There are a few, but m most of them, they stay near the water. And God provides for them and takes care of them. And, uh, you know, all these things are a part of who God is. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. So rain, no rain. Rain, no rain. Who's in charge of that? Folks, if you can't see in the last 20 day, 20 Sundays that God is in charge of the rain then you're missing something, something big. Because we have all prayed that God would give us decent weather. And here we are again. God, this is him. He's the one on the throne. Okay, he causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of men that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So who makes sure we have the food? I don't know about you, but in this crazy year, um, my father has grown the best tomatoes I have ever had from him. And I've had a lot of tomatoes in my lifetime from my dad. And, and I don't know that he's had the best water this year, but it's just happened to be the year that everything grew amazingly well. That's all God. It's all God. It goes on in verse 15. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. These are the three things which also represent what's inside of uh, the, the tabernacle at that special holy place. Um, you know, they're all the same things. There's pretty amazing to me. But, uh, uh, you know, you think about what God is actually doing here and what he's talking to us about. The things that comfort us. Guess where they come from? From God. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of the Lebanon, which, have, which he hath planted. Okay, the cedars of Lebanon are the biggest trees in the world. They're, they're, they were known for being the most magnificent trees. I would have loved to have seen a real cedar of Lebanon. I don't know what they are today. I don't know if there's still any available. But when I think about the most magnificent tree, you know, we think about the redwoods out in California, right? I just wonder, what was this tree? Man, if it's, if it's the most magnificent, and he planted them, is his claim. It was his. Okay? Which the birds make their nest, uh, as for the stork, the fir trees are, are her house. He takes care of every single one. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. All of this placed by him, given by him, for each one, exactly what they need. Um, he appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. 
He even gave us the light and the setup and how it all works and, and how it draws the tides and how it doesn't. He did all of this for the seasons and, and to give us an understanding of that he's the one in control. By the way, he tells us elsewhere that, that this cycle of sun, moon, and stars and, and also the hot and cold and all these things are all him. It's all proof that he's still on his throne. Verse 20, Thou makest darkness and it is night, that wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. So he even provided for animals that needed to have the darkness in order to do their hunting. You just think about this. This is our God that we're serving. Verse 21, the young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. They, they are probably the most capable animals to get it for themselves in our human eyes. And yet, what's the Bible say? He gives it to them. It's amazing, folks. The sun ariseth, they gathereth themselves together, uh, they lay down in their dens, Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. Even our, our, our responsibility and work is all given by God. We go forth to our labor. We come back in the night. We go on to our next day. Man, what a monotonous thing. No. It's a gift from God, folks. It's a gift from God what we're doing and what we've been gifted to do. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Again, if we just take in totality who God is and what he's done. Remember, he wants us to get to know him. And verse 7, I think, is the idea of, of making sure we understand what he's capable of so we really know how to worship him. And, and he has manifold, or too many to count, is the idea, works. Wisdom that hath made them all. He's the only one wise enough to do all this. You know, we can invent some things. You know, my, my brother is an inventor. He has a few patents and things that he's done over the years. My oldest one, the one from Texas. Um, he's pretty smart. But he spends years just keeping it perfected. The, the, the plane that he's worked on it has been the same plane that he's worked on for 20 years. By the way, he watches our service. He'll see us next week. Hi, Rich. Um, you, you know, this is the type of thing we need to understand, though. God designed it, fixed it, made it, all of it. No problem. Manifold. The earth is full of his riches. Folks, we have them everywhere around us. Verse 25, so is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. Austin's been studying with us um, the, the creatures of the sea, the creatures of the fifth day. And we're looking at the, the, the different animals and, and how they can't even figure out where some whales um, even have their young because they have such an ability to go so deep and to get so far away that we can't track them and we can't follow them. That is absolutely amazing to me. That, that God has provided so much that even the biggest whale can hide to where we can't figure out what their patterns are. That's, that's just, just amazing to me. Okay? Uh, it goes on and talks about, there go the ships, there is the Leviathan. That, that's, by the way, a, a, a water dinosaur. Um, we find him in Job as well. So if you think that dinosaurs aren't in the Bible, he's right there. He's mentioned right there. That's the, the sea creature, the sea beast. Okay, it's a water dragon. Um, whom thou hast made to play therein. So God created them. Again, another claim that God created this beast. This wasn't after 60 million years or whatever, after it's all been exploded and blown up. No, God created them as a part of the creation week. But listen, he made it for them to play in. That's what Job tells us too, that he's the only one that can control this thing. Verse 27, these wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Again, the, the most amazing creature in the water with the most amazing ability to do whatever he needs to do to get whatever he needs to get. And what does he have? He has God feeding him. Folks, we need to understand. We, we are not. It's God. It's God. He created angels and made them spirits. 
He gave them the flame of the wind. He gave them the ability to impact all of us and help the cause of Christ. This is our God that we serve. But look at this. It says unto us, uh, These wait upon thee that thou may give them their meat and due season. Verse 28. That thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Folks, these two verses are saying, if God were to say, okay, I back off. It's done. It's done. Okay. I'm not doing this. So here we are, verse 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and just his gaze, what's it say? It trembleth. He touches the hills, and just with a touch, they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. When Amy picked that song for me to sing this week, I was like, why are we picking that one? So last night we're practicing and I'm, I'm reading and I'm reading the end of this study and, and preparing the finishing touches of looking at the very end here and it dawned on me. Because last night was the first time I practiced the song. Hun, did you read the scripture? Did you know that this is in here? Because the exact words that I just sang for you in the special music are the words that are written right here in this passage. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Folks, when we focus on ourselves, when we become about us, we stop seeing who God is and what he's doing. Verse 35, let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. Folks, Hebrews 1 verse 7 tells us that God is the creator of a special being. That we just can't really fathom how an angel truly works. It's hard enough to describe how we have a body, soul, and spirit, but at least they're all together. And at least they're always there or you're dead. But he created this being. And he quoted it from a section of verses that include the majesty of God in every shape and form. And I think we need to understand God is here. He does care. And he does want to help us as we walk our path here in this earth. Will you look up to him and see him for who he really is? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. For just a moment, I'd like to ask you, if you die here today, would you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven? <clears throat> if you say, Pastor, I don't, I don't know for sure, I just want to tell you, God loves you and he wants to save you. He, he wants to have communication with you. He wants you to know who he really is. And he tells us that what we should do is, is confess with our mouth that we recognize we're a sinner. Tell God, I, I know I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. He wants us to believe that he is God's son who came to this earth, paid our penalty, took our place, and changes how we behave, how we think, and what we do. And then he wants us to accept, ask Jesus to come into our heart. I trust that if you don't know the Lord as Savior, you prayed that prayer with us right now, and it changes who you are. Christian, as we sit here together, Will you with me tell God I want to focus on who you are and what you've done? 
I want to get to know the things of God and how he is providing for every little animal and creature in the sea and everywhere else, the birds and, and the, the animals on the mountaintop. And in the midst of this, he cares about me too. No matter what your struggle, no matter what your problem, God is there. When shadows fall and the night covers all, there are things that my eyes cannot see. I'll never fear, for the Savior is near. My Lord abides with me. How can I fear? Jesus is near. He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear with Jesus? When I'm alone and I face the unknown and I fear what the future may be, I can depend on the strength of my friend. He walks along with me. How can I fear Jesus is near? He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear with Jesus? Jesus is king. He controls everything. He is with me each night and each day. I trust my soul to the Savior's control. He drives all fear away. How can I fear Jesus is near? He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear? with Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. And Lord, we are truly grateful for the majestic, amazing God that you are. You are so wonderful and so far beyond us. Lord, we do not ever truly have the ability of giving you the total credit for what you've done. And someday, Lord, I, I desire to be in your presence and to see you for who you are and what you've done and to be able to have my eyes open to even more than I ever, uh, ever acknowledged. And Lord, I thank you and praise you for who you are, that you love us, that you want to, to be a part of our lives. You want us to understand you can feed us like you did the animals. You can take care of us. You can lead us. You can guide us. You can give us where we need to stay. You can do all those things that's in your hands. We trust you, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that it would encourage every heart, no matter where they are, whether here in the service today or watching over the next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Bye.